we now want to take this idea of a frequency distribution a little bit further and talk about an expanded frequency distribution. Okay, here we go, we have an expanded frequency distribution. So in the last video we saw that there are classes and I've taken some uh, data and created this frequency distribution. We've got text messages in my students' phones. So I had the students get their phones out, check how many text messages they had, and then we put it into, we organized that data into a frequency distribution. So the classes ranged from 1 to 50, 51 to 100, 101 to 150, and so on and so forth, all the way down to 350. Notice that the classes are all the same size. 51 minus 1 is 50. 101 minus 51 is 50. 151 minus 101 is 50. So our class size, class size is 50. Now that doesn't have to be a part of your, your, your frequency distribution or your expanded frequency distribution, but it's always good to check that the lower class limits are all the same distance away from each other. So there's our frequencies. Relative frequency is something that we haven't talked about yet, but relative frequency is when you take um, relative frequency is when you take the total amount of data values that you have and you change the frequency into a percent. So in this case, we have what 12 plus 18 plus 7 plus 9. Let's see, 12 plus 18 plus 7 plus 9 plus 5 plus 6 plus 10 is 67. So our total down here is 67. And 12 out of 67 is 17.9, approximately, 17.9%. And then 18 out of 67 is 26.9%. And 7 out of 67 is 10.4%. And we can continue until we got all of our, perc all of our percents. And that is relative frequency. Very important that you know how to find relative frequency in relationship to frequency. There is a difference between the two, okay? <clears throat> but in, a, in an expanded frequency distribution, we add two more columns. One of those is midpoints. And the way that you find the midpoint is you take the lower class limit plus the other upper class limit and you divide by two. So to find the midpoint, let me create a little bit more space here. You take the lower class limit plus the upper class limit and then divide all of that by 2. So in this case, I'm going to take for each one of these 50, take the first one, plus, 50, plus 1, which is 51, and 51 divided by 2 is 50 plus 1 divided by 2 is 51 divided by 2, which is 25 and a half. So my midpoint for this class is 25.5. My midpoint for the next one, 51 plus 100 is 151. Divide that by 2 and we get 75.5. And the next one is 101 plus 150. Divide that by 2, and we get 125.5. Now, we're probably seeing a pattern here. Because if you notice, if we had to take the midpoint, 75.5 minus 25.5, 75.5 minus 25.5, we end up getting 50 which, if we remember correctly, 50 is our class size right there. So the midpoints are all going to have the same class size or class width. So I can just continue to add 50 to get the, re get the rest of my midpoint. So if I take 125.5 plus 50, I get 175.5. And then 175.5 plus 50 is 225.5. And then 275.5, and finally 325.5. And that's how we can find our midpoints, which is a part of our expanded frequency distribution. 
Now the last part of our expanded frequency distribution is cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency. And what you do with cumulative frequency is you just start with each class and you add them up as you go. You accumulate them. Okay? So 12 is the cumulative frequency for our first class. But after we go to our second class, we add 18, which gives us 30. So 12 plus 18 gives us 30. And then 12 plus 18 plus 7 is going to give us 37. We just add the next frequency to fill out the cumulative frequency part of our fre expanded frequency distribution. So 37 plus 9 is 46. 46 plus 5 is 51. 51 plus 6 is 57. And 57 plus 10 is 67. And that takes us back to our totals. Right there. So that's how you can create an expanded frequency distribution.